This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some big update to share with you. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are discussing legislative moves of how to cut down gas prices. Pete Buttigieg is grilled on Fox News about inflation as well as whether or not he's going to run for president in 2024. Joe Manchin kills Build Back Better again. I'll play a video clip from his colleague saying it may not be completely dead and there could be certain parts that are revived. Also, I'll give you the latest stimulus news like this. Americans can start applying for two new payment programs worth up to $1,000 in days. And President Biden has asked whether or not student loans will be forgiven. And he says he's considering it. And I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a terrific Thursday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-based updates, hit the like button down below. And I'm giving $200 to my subscribers announcing the winners tomorrow. So you still have until today to sign up if you haven't already. Let's get into it. So Pelosi, Schumer discuss legislative moves to cut gas prices. Rising prices are a top concern for many voters. Democrats already face a tough road to holding on to control of the House and Senate in November election. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer met to discuss possible legislation to reduce gasoline prices, according to a Democratic aide, as inflation poses an increasing political threat ahead of the midterm election. So they are doing everything they can, they as in the Democrats, to try to pass some sort of legislation to keep control of the Senate and the House. Now, what can be happened with this? Uh, so Nancy Pelosi in the past said rebate cards payments being considered to fight gas costs. So if there is a federal legislation, there could be federal gas cards, gas debit cards, rebate cards, something like that, where it goes out to everybody. I'll keep you updated on that. But over the next days and weeks, there's probably going to be a lot of legislation pushed uh, to try to get more voters in November. Uh, also, Manchin talks with GOP on energy bill as advocates push Democrats to do it alone. So the, uh, the Build Back Better is sort of dead. But Democrats are trying to work with Joe Manchin to get little pieces of it done. Uh, take a look at this video clip right here of what Joe Manchin wants and doesn't want in that new bill. Note, Democrat Joe Manchin says there will be no revival of Biden's Build Back Better. Senator, if he doesn't go for it, is Build Back Better really dead for good? I think it's dead in the sense of how much money they wanted to do at once. But if you read between the lines, he said he's not for like child tax credits, uh, daycare, that kind of stuff. But when he talks about energy and he also mentioned climate, I'm afraid that they'll try to work some of that stuff in and do it in smaller amounts. All along, he said he's open to something practical and less money. Again, will he offset it? Will he find it elsewhere? For those reasons, I think it's probably mostly dead. I think it'd be hard to get 60 people in this body I'm a part of to agree on something like that. So the Build Back Better doesn't seem like it is going to pass with Joe Manchin, at least the bigger Build Back Better that it was before. I thought they were going to rebrand it to Building a Better America. I guess not, uh, but I'll let you know what's going to happen moving forward. So Build Back Better dies again. Most likely uh, we're going to see big pushes from the Democrats, but then probably denied again by Joe Manchin, unless a lot of stuff is cut from that bill. I'll keep you up data on that. And then Democrats press education department over plans to help student loan borrowers in default. And then also uh, some big news here, sort of uh, student loan forgiveness. Uh, hold on. Biden tells lawmakers he's still considering it. So is he considering it? Is it going to happen? Also, another one, Dem lawmaker says Biden suggests he'll ease student loan burden. So we're hearing a lot of different things. We're hearing that some Senate Democrats, that President Biden could cancel it via executive order. We're hearing other people saying that he can't. Uh, Biden is considering it. Well, in his, in his campaign in 2020, uh, he said it would also be a win for Democratic and progressive leaders who have long pressed Biden to carry through on a 2020 campaign promise that as president, he would immediately cancel up to $10,000 in debt per student. I used to read that from his campaign website, which has since been deleted, but 
immediately canceled $10,000 in student debt. So the current thing is that he is considering it. But regardless of the argument of whether student loans should be forgiven or not, he did make that promise. And if he made that promise and fulfill it, he should also fulfill the promise of $200 increase per month for all Social Security beneficiaries. If he's going to go through with student loan forgiveness, he should go through with this, with Social Security recipients and the promise of an extra $200 per month. That would help out so many people. People, especially with high inflation and costs. Take a look at this video clip right here of Pete Buttigieg being grilled on Fox News about being president, inflation, and a few other topics. Take a look at this. Uh, what has, in your mind, the administration done to fight inflation? Well, a whole lot, and uh, I'll mention a few areas. One, uh, what I work on a lot, of course, around supply chains. One of many, many things that's pushing prices upward is shipping costs, and anything we can do to smooth out any inefficiencies in the system is going to help. That's why we've been working both on long-term infrastructure investments and short-term improvements that are going to make a difference. But Let's also acknowledge that there are a lot of things that can happen on the policy side that would reduce costs for Americans in addition to what we're working on the supply chain or other pieces of it. For example, the president has supported a move to lower the cost of insulin. Uh, House passed a bill. A few Republicans even crossed over to vote with Democrats on this to cap the cost of insulin at $35. And that's something I think most Americans would agree, at least for those families that are counting on insulin, is the sort of thing that takes the pressure off when you're seeing high prices putting pressure on other parts of the family budget. Look, there are some parts of the economy uh, that are more responsive than others uh, to policy choices, right? But we know right now we could act to lower the cost of prescription drugs, lower the cost of things like insulin, lower the cost of child care. That's a longstanding policy goal of ours. Right. And again, what I'm working on is things that can help lower the cost of shipping. With federal spending, though, you know, I'd, FedEx owner, um, founder, CEO, Fred Smith, recently said, if I'm getting a government check, there's less incentive to go into the warehouse. Had we passed Build Back Better, that bill that Biden wanted, my guess is that we would be Weimar Germany right now. We'd have 25 percent inflation rather than 9 percent or 10 percent. And I asked about, about that when he was on the show this week. Take a listen. Secretary Summers basically forewarned of this in February of 2021, instant reduction of demand and then the stimulus payments created demand for goods and then the third stimulus payment about a year ago created a significant labor shortage and all of those went together to create the situation we have today. So his point is, is that the solution by since spending more money and now there's this talk about uh, wiping out student loan debt doesn't really affect inflation. Well, look, the decisions that were made to rescue the American economy, uh, are, I think, are rightly credited with why we have low unemployment today and why more Americans have more money in our pockets. And yes, that means Americans are buying a lot. That creates a lot of demand. And when supply can't keep up, that is an inflationary pressure. But it's interesting that Germany was mentioned, right? So in modern-day Germany, in modern-day Europe, uh, you're seeing the same inflationary pressures that we're seeing in the United States. This is largely a global phenomenon. We're seeing the same thing uh, with food prices. And, you know, most Nobel Prize-winning economists who evaluated the president's fiscal policies believe they would actually serve to ease inflationary pressures. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but the bottom line is we're working against inflation with everything that we've got. I want to ask you just quickly, and this isn't up your alley, but D DHS Secretary Mayorkas has said today that the Biden administration has, quote, effectively managed the border crisis. Do you believe that? I think the, the men and women of, uh, of the Department of Homeland Security and across the administration have done remarkable work under extremely challenging circumstances. We also recognize that those challenges continue. Uh, they may change. They may grow, uh, especially as you see pandemic-related restrictions uh, shift, like the conversation around Title 42. I'm not up on all of the specifics. Yeah, and I don't want to go down that road, but he said in private in August that he told the Border Patrol, the agents, that the situation was unsustainable. And you have to watch as, as a transportation issue uh, what's coming across the border and where those folks are going. Yeah, no question. That's why we've been calling for immigration reform for years. Look, we've got a broken system. And the truth is only Congress can fix it for good. Uh, I, 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 as a transportation secretary and as an American citizen, would love to see that happen.
We really appreciate you coming on, and um, I, I do want to ask you about this. Did you see this Washington Post thing with the top 10 Democratic presidential candidates for 2024? Last thing on my mind right now is uh, presidential elections. All right, but you're number two ahead of Vice President Harris. It says, Transportation Secretary moves ahead of Harris and would enter 2024 with more heft as a Cabinet Secretary to the extent people don't want Biden or Harris. He's next in line, just in terms of sheer plausibility. Thinking about it at all. No, what I'm thinking about is how to make sure that we deliver half a trillion dollars worth of value out of the funding that has been entrusted to us by Congress and that the president has asked me to ensure we get the transportation part of its right. That, that is more than enough to occupy more than 100 percent of my attention and capacity. And that's where my energy is going. What are your thoughts on that? He brought up a few points saying that inflation isn't just happening in America. It's a global thing. So were the stimulus checks the cause of that? Also, should Pete Buttigieg run against President Biden for president in 2024? Uh, let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. So let's get into stimulus news. Came across this article. Bernie Sanders was initially hesitant to work with Josh Hawley to push for stimulus checks, according to a book. So Sanders was initially hesitant to work with Josh Hawley for the push of $1,200 stimulus checks. If you remember back in, I think, yeah, 2020, uh, Josh Hawley, and, which was a Republican senator, and then Bernie Sanders were pushing for big stimulus checks. Josh Hawley going against the grain of the GOP and was pushing that. Uh, didn't really, well, actually, I guess it did. It, it was, we were able to get the second and third stimulus check, which was kind of combined. So I guess it sort of worked there. And then in terms of other stimulus, so Americans can start applying for two new payment programs worth up to $1,000 in two days. See if you're eligible. So this is coming, there's two applications this week, one in Chicago, one in Iowa. So the one in Chicago is for 5,000 low-income households can get $500 per month of universal basic income. So if you live in Chicago, you can apply for that now. And then in Johnson County, uh, 2,500 residents who have struggled during the pandemic can apply for a $1,400 payment. So if you live in Johnson County, Iowa, you could get a $1,400 check there potentially. And then also on the side, $150 gas card. That's still, uh, there's going to be a vote. Uh, I think there yeah, a vote coming up soon for the $150 gas card in Chicago. So I'll keep you updated on that. And then other states giving out money. So states will give cash worth up to thousand dollars so i'll give you a quick rundown so georgia given 250 375 and 500 dollars idaho giving 75 dollars or 12 percent indiana 125 dollars new jersey 500 and a thousand dollars new mexico 250 and 500 dollars maine 850 dollars this summer california working on 400 dollars and 800 dollar gas checks for anyone who owns vehicles, Hawaii, $100, Kansas, 6.5% in uh, grocery tax is going to be cut, Minnesota, $1,000 checks and $500 checks, New York, property tax rebate, Pennsylvania, potential $2,000 checks, and Virginia, pausing gas tax for three months. So those are the latest, uh, usually changes every few days with that. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Belle. This is a tip of the day. I tell you the one thing they should do. When you when you make something dirty, you have to clean it up or, or ask someone to help you. Like if you made something like really dirty, you have to, you have to clean it up. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. And to show my support, I'm giving the $200 announcing the winners tomorrow. So if you haven't signed up already, I have details of how you could do so down in the description below. Just click the show more button and you'll see exactly how you could sign up for that. Today's the last day. I'm announcing the winners tomorrow at random. Uh, also, if you want to check out my latest pickleball video you could click up here and i'll see you in the next video take care be safe thank you for watching